It's the NFL on EA Sports, where we'll see who's better, Houston's former team or its current one. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Stadium in Houston. And a decent return out to the 27 yard line. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's offensive rookie of the year, CJ Stroud. And he's coming off of a truly remarkable rookie season where he quieted a lot of his doubters in a most emphatic fashion. Remember, going into the draft, many thought he was the number two quarterback coming out of college. He proved quickly he was a top quarterback going into the NFL. One of the best rookie seasons by a quarterback in recent memory. And what's scary about it? He's not even close to reaching his ceiling. Stroud looks to throw on the first play. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second and six. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Able to shake him off. A good decision in the end. The pull it and run gets him nine yards in a first. That's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Play action. Here's Stroud. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Stroud looking to throw. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and ten. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. A beautiful thing. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That good for 22 and a first down. And a nice strong run there by Mixon. And the Texans, they decided a year ago after ranking 28th in rushing offense that they needed Joe Mixon. He's coming off another impressive season in Cincinnati where he surpassed 1,400 all-purpose yards, and he will be the lead runner for this Texans team. Back to Mixon on first down. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, there to make the play defensively. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. 
Throwing quickly. That's caught by Brown out wide. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. He's got his target. That's complete. And that's a touchdown. But hold on. There is a flag down on the field. We'll have to see what this is about. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You've got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Only able to gain a couple there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, and that was a nice job of improvising, but it's not normal. Usually when the screen pass is taken away, you're taught to just throw the ball at the ground at the feet of the receiver so that you don't get it intercepted and just start over. But he ended up finding another receiver. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here are the Titans ready to go on offense for the first time. And it's Will Levis, the 25-year-old at quarterback in his second season out of Kentucky. And last year's rookie year, a bit of a mixed bag for the young signal caller out of Kentucky. Showed off plenty of tools but was hurt in the preseason, and it took a little while to get going. But once he did, he showed exactly why the Titans wanted him. Toughness, leadership, and a big arm. The team rallied around him down the stretch. So first and 10 now from the 30. The first carry now for Tony Pollard. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected it. it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Levis to throw off play action. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. Nice grab there by Ridley, who made the move to Tennessee this offseason after recording over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns in his lone season as a Jacksonville Jaguar. And now that the rust of the previous couple of years has worn off, the Titans, they're certainly hoping he can take it a step further in 2024 in Nashville. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. Now second and nine. As they've got it as we resume action. Second down, Pollard again. They'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. 
early down stuffs have put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Now third down and seven. Now Levis. Here's a screen now for Pollard. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. Here we go, fourth down, Levis. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A gutsy call. Turns out to be a good one, though. First down on a pickup of 11. Levis. And that's caught one more time by Bull. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Levis from the gun. Throw here taken in by Wiley, the tight end. So the completion good for just three, and it's second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. And Levis going back to the air. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent game. Levis now off of play action. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, Took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. The folks' kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Going a little tennis on well, me, I huh? know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back out and they get a backhand. What was the serve? It, it, what was the return on? It was a backhand. I and like a that really one. good backhand. With some nice top spin on the a little bit. Thing. A little I bit. love it. Yeah. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. And Stroud now to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he will get enough for a first down, and that will lead us to the two-minute warning. 
Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Stroud to throw it. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Stroud will look to throw once more. He's got his man, Schultz, coming across the formation. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. Stroud sets up the play action. And it's caught. It's so close. He gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. Mixon, no signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. Stroud working out of the gun. Dumps it off to Mixon. And he is going to lose yardage here. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. This Titan defense, they just will not give in easily. Looking for another stop, third and goal. Here's a run with Mixon. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon punching it in from a yard away. And the Texans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. Two good drives on their first two possessions. Remember, the first wound up in a field goal, but we all know Field goals aren't going to cut it in the NFL, so they're not going to be denied here, and they wind up punching this one into the end zone. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Well, now how about this return? A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Titans offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. 
I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Levis back to throw. He finds Hopkins complete. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. This second and four. Back to throw, it's Levis. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and up for the incompletion. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Levis looking to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Levis. This one caught by Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. They'll throw it again with Levis. They're throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and they have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. And now Nick Folk, his career long, 56 yards. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this will stay at a seven-point game. Yeah, it's been a disappointing first half for him, all things considered, and this can serve as the capper. It's a missed field goal in the late going, and that's only going to serve to lessen the mood even further. Final play of the half, Stroud. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Titans going to get the ball to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back to it on EA Sports. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Titans getting set to go here to begin the third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing 
equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Levis to throw it. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Throw to the right, caught by Akakwo. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll come up now third and three. Levis sets up the throw here. Oh, and that is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Texans will take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that will bring up second down. Play action. Stroud now. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And they work this well up field across the 45. 22 yards there, a first down. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick them into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give them a little bit of confidence that big plays are out there. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. At halftime, you had to feel like the defense had to be in a good position. They had to feel good about themselves. They'd had this guy boxed in all game long, but after that run, that might be the breakthrough that he's looking for. Now they may have some difficulty dealing with him the rest of today. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Stroud looking to throw. To Mixon on the check down. He'll get it inside the 20. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. 
Look, I realize on any play call, when it's properly executed, it can go for a touchdown. But the runs that really make it work are the ones where you just get what you need, right? And he barely got the first down, but he got it. Again, it's Mixon. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. 69 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. On the bootleg, Stroud. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. Now they've gotten it to the one. Can they get that final yard here on third and goal? Mixon trying to punch it in. And this time he is in. Yes. Joe Mixon. His second touchdown of the night. And the Texans have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. That time, a nine-play drive, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Levis. A throw off his back foot there. That's going to wind up incomplete. NFL quarterbacks work so hard on their mechanics, and they do so much repetition in practice, offseason, the whole deal. They expect it to be autopilot once the game starts. That way it eliminates any type of pressure of the game, pressure of people in your face, all of that. That didn't shine through on that throw, though, did it? No. A little bit of a dangerous pass and off target, too. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Levis. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback.
The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. Back to Mixon on second down. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. And this is the worry because sometimes you can get a little too predictable in spots like this. You know you're going to run the ball, but they know you're going to run the ball as well. And now you look up and you're staring at an important third down. The Texans on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Eight yards that time. Able to take off, and the result is a first down. Now that's a killer because you think you've got it absolutely covered, and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third, and then the tables turn. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Stroud. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Ball on the 39. Here's the second down and four. Mix it up the middle. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Stroud off the play fake. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 90 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Here's second and 10. Now it's Mixon running right, and he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now Stroud. Being chased out left. Stroud is hit, and the ball is loose. It's picked up by the Titans. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching 
execution and absolute belief because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. So Levis and the Titans now down by two touchdowns, just over two minutes to go. Can they take advantage of the late carelessness? We'll see as they've got a first down. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Whistles now in a timeout defensively. So a wise move as they'll use the first of their timeouts to force one more play before the two-minute warning. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. It's Mixon on the counter. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Another run on second down. Try to cover up. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, it's Mixon. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This to make it a three-score game late. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Tennessee offense set to go again. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Second and 10. Looking to throw. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Levis out of the shotgun now. 
Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Now inside the 25, and finally down at the 9-yard line. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Listen, when you're at this point of the game, all options are on the table. Fourth down, they say, we've got to go for it. And what a play they come up with. Big yardage there to keep the drive alive. Levis to throw once more. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. He had to absorb another little bump there from the defense. Another incomplete pass. We've seen a lot of that tonight. They've come after him all night long. Nothing but pressure in his face. He's trying to stand up there and make throws. It's hard enough to do when the pocket is clear. When you got all those people in front of you, almost impossible to have a good completion percentage. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Third and goal, here's Levis. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Tony Pollard, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Titans are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Folk connects on the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. So this drive spans seven plays, and the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this will be recovered by the Texans. So victory appears to be in sight. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Texans offense and running back Joe Mixon set to take over once more. And as we take a look at some of the highlights, we see just how impactful he's been. He and his quarterback have such a great chemistry together, and it's been on full display throughout the contest. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. To a knee goes Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. 
Well, what we saw here was offense spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.